In this video, I would like to teach you how to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes of this rational function of x minus 4 divided by x minus 6. So first, let's work with the domain. Whenever you're trying to find the domain of a function, what you want to think about is, are there any values of x that if I plug it into this function is going to give an overall wacky answer? Or in other words, not going to make sense. So I do this in a three-step process. Look at the numerator first, then look at the denominator, and then look at the overall function as a whole. So in terms of the numerator, there's no restriction, right? You can plug any x you want in here, negative, positive, right, zero, it doesn't matter, and you can subtract four from that, it doesn't matter. It'd be different if there was a square root, right? You cannot plug in negative values. So if this was like square rooted, then your domain would be restricted. You couldn't have negative numbers now, all right? However, right now we're, we're all good with this um, in terms of the numerator. Then the denominator, same thing. No restrictions on x, you can plug in whatever you want. Now I look at the function as a whole and I'm like, oh, I have a fraction. Is there anything, are there any numbers that I can't have in the numerator or denominator of a fraction? And it turns out there is, right? You can't have a zero down here, right? The denominator cannot be zero. What's four divided by zero? Well, I don't know. Error, divide by zero, you can't do it, okay? Can't do it. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now in terms of defining the domain is I want to find the x value down here that's going to give an overall zero result. Now you can just look at this, right? What x, when you subtract 6 from it, is going to give you zero? Obviously, it's going to be 6, right? You can just simply set this denominator then equal to zero, right? If it gets a little more complicated, and you can just solve that for x, and x is going to be equal to 6. So in other words, this is the restriction. If x is equal to 6, this function is undefined, and that is a domain restriction. And that's the only value. That's it. So the domain here, we can say, is going to be all real numbers, all real numbers, except, except for 6, x equaling 6, okay? Except for when x equals 6. And you could write that in interval notation or whatever notation you need, but that's it. Now, let's work with the uh, vertical asymptote next. So it turns out with the vertical asymptote, you're going to do a similar analysis, but first thing you want to do is make sure your function is fully factored. Okay, make sure it's fully factored and cancel any terms that you possibly can. Now in this, in this example, this is fully factored, right? It's not like you have x squared minus 6, which you might be able to factor that. It'd be a little awkward to do, but you can definitely do it. Um, you know, this is a in fully factored form, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, there's no factors I'm going to cancel, right? These x's do not cancel. Okay, these x's don't cancel. So right now I know it's in fully factored form and I can't cancel anything. So then what I do is I say, okay, whatever value gives an overall result of zero again in the denominator is going to be my vertical asymptote. Now it turns out that when we did the domain of this function, we actually also found the vertical asymptote. Since nothing canceled here, I would take this denominator, set it equal to zero, just like we did over here and solve that for x. And that is going to give me the equation or equations of the vertical asymptote. So we kind of did the old, you know, killing two birds with one stone, but remember, we don't like to kill here. So we like to say, you got two desserts in one sitting. All right. So here, horse, the vertical asymptote. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, what am I doing? Right. Vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptote, it's going to be an x is equal to six. And that takes care of that. Remember, all vertical lines are going to have a value, x equaling a value. Now, next is going to be the horizontal asymptote. So in order to find the horizontal asymptote, you first have to ask yourself a question. Is the function top heavy, equally heavy? If I could spell, that would be nice. Equal what? Equal or bottom heavy, okay? Now, to determine this, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the function, and you're going to identify the highest power of x in the numerator, which is a 1, highest power of x in the denominator, which is a 1, and you're going to compare the exponents. If they're equal, this is known as an equally heavy function. All right, if this were a 2, this would be a top heavy, and if this were a 2, for exa example, this would be a bottom heavy function. Now, when you have an equally heavy function, what you're going to do in order to find the horizontal asymptote is this. You're going to take the coefficient of the highest power of x in your numerator, which in this case is a 1, and then you're also going to take that highest power of x's coefficient in the denominator, which is 1, and you're going to take the numerator's coefficient and divide it by the denominator's coefficient. So what's 1 divided by 1? Obviously just 1. And that is now, that is the value of the horizontal asymptote. Now remember, horizontal asymptotes, 
the horizontal line, so it's always going to be y is equaling a number, so y is equal to 1. That is indeed the horizontal asymptote. So all you have to do is divide the coefficient of the highest x power in the numerator by the highest power, the highest coefficient, um, or no, the coefficient of the highest x value in the denominator. Uh, it's been a long week, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually been a long month. It's been a long month. But we're almost towards the end of school, right? Who's excited? Who's excited? Yes. So, right. So that's it. That's it. Now, what you can do is you can graph this thing. If you wanted to kind of get a feel for it, right? Let me just go back to here. All right. And just graph it. So open parentheses, do x minus 4. So x minus 4, close the parentheses, then hit divided by, then open the parentheses again, and then do x minus 6. And let's see what we have. Now, this is the function. Okay. Now, notice where the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes are, right? We have a vertical asymptote here right at x being equal to 6, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, right? Look at that. x is equal to 6. We said that that's what the vertical asymptote was going to be. And where's the horizontal asymptote? Right at y is equal to? Look at that. y is equal to 1. Beautiful thing. As my ninth grade and 12th grade math teacher just said, it's a beautiful thing. Ah, oh, the good old days. You're going to miss it one day. You're going to miss it. You'll miss it. Uh, her name was Mrs. Dam, too. Imagine having a math teacher named Mrs. Dam. Hmm. You can imagine how much fun that class was. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. Check out our channel because we have thousands of problems solved for you. Not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well. We do specific problems. And we constantly update the description below with all types of little goodies for you just to help you through your class. All right. So we'd love to help you. Check us out.